Hello, welcome to another video from Todata. My name is Chris van der Zwan and in today's video we're discussing how to license Windows Server and what are the differences between standard and data center, when is it more cost effective to choose standard or data center or the new pair virtual machine licensing model. Let's jump into it. How to license Microsoft Windows Server. Microsoft Windows Server is licensed per core slash per client access license. Now, what does that mean? Is that literally every user or device who's able to connect to a Windows Server needs a client access license. And every physical or virtual machine needs a core license per the number of cores with a minimum per eight per CPU or a minimum eight per virtual machine and a minimum of 16 cores per physical server. That, that sounds really easy, right? Isn't it? Uh, it? It is probably not that easy when we jump in, uh, into virtualized uh, areas, virtualized environments, because there we see that a lot of organizations are making mistakes by calculating hyper-threading or calculating test production machines or calculating the cluster uh, incorrectly. So let's zoom into how uh, the details of this licensing model really works. That said, it's also important to find the most cost-effective way to license your Windows Server environment. Now, you have two additions or let's say enterprise uh, organizations have two options. That is the Microsoft Windows Standard Edition. And with Microsoft Windows Standard Edition, uh, you get two virtual machines to license. So let's say you have a physical machine of two CPUs, eight cores per CPU. You have a total of 16 cores. You license that with Windows Server Standard for 16 cores. And then you are able to run two virtual machines in that environment. Later, we will discuss more if you have more virtual machines. So that's option one. Option two is license that same physical hardware with the two CPUs and 16 cores in total with Windows Server Data Center. Uh, then also you need 16 cores to license. Logic wise, you have then uh, Windows Server Data Center is way more cost heavy because you get more rights. And what is that right? You get unlimited virtualization rights. So you're not only uh, able to license only two free virtual machines, but literally an unlimited number of Windows Server operating systems in the virtual machine area. That said, so now when and how do you then count the number of required cores? We know by now that the Windows Server is licensed per core slash client access licensing model uh, and to the physical hardware or to a virtual machine. Right? In Azure, it's very logic that we choose a virtual machine, but also now since 2022, you are able to license your on-premise uh, estate also by virtual machine. Uh, that makes the world a little bit more, not very complex, we have more options, uh, but it's also, it makes it more complex to determine which model is the most cost-effective model uh, to choose and you need more data to be able to choose that. Now, which data do we need to uh, to that? Now, first of all, and we make a distinction between non-environment uh, or non-virtualized environments and virtualized environments, because in a non-virtualized environment, you need a little bit less information than in a virtualized environment. Now, in a non-virtualized environment, we need information such as the server name, operating system, because we only focus on Windows Server and not the Linux or, uh, machines. Addition, version, uh, version is relevant because maybe you have old licenses, right? So we want to know if you're still running 2018 of the newest version 2020-25 and do you have enough uh, uh, license of the latest version. Uh, the environment, is it production, is it development, test or acceptance? Because at dev DTA environments you can also license with Visual Studio, what could achieve your cost savings. Uh, the number of CPUs per server and the number of cores per CPU. Uh, and the last question is what is relevant is, is system center managed because then you can copy and paste your Windows Server licensing model also for system center and ideally even uh, bring it to one license in the core infrastructure suite to get a good discount. Um, don't underestimate that. So what we also sometimes see is the number of CPU cores is including hyper-threading. You only count the physical hardware and the physical specs 
So please leave the hybrid threading out of it, otherwise you're paying double the price for your Windows Server licenses. Now, in the virtualized environments, we need a little bit more information because more, most of the time we're not looking at one physical server, we're not looking at one or two virtual machines, we're looking at way more virtual machines, we're looking at clusters. So we need, therefore, the data center location and name. This is mostly, we use this as a, a fabrication that we know that there are different clustering, different uh, locations, uh, and that we're sure that we're talking about a different cluster. The cluster name, the server name, uh, and the physical server name is high availability, uh, load balancing enabled, yes or no, which is very relevant for the licensing, which we will discuss later. Uh, the number of virtual machines per cluster uh, and per virtual uh, or per server if load balancing is not enabled. Uh, and then ideally we will also want to know or only focus on the virtual machine with operating system with a server. So we want to leave out Linux and we want to make a distinction between production, development, test and acceptance because you have alternative licensing solutions and options there. Uh, we want to know the operating system addition version, uh, the environment, what we also discussed uh, previously, and the number of CPU per server, number of cores per CPU. And again, if it's system center managed, yes or no. All right, so here you can already see that it is becoming a little bit more complex when you have a virtualized environment and to determine when and which uh, for, uh, licensing model is the most cost effective. Uh, now, be aware that you only need to license once more at the Windows Server operating system. So once more, we want to leave out non-production machines, Linux. We see so often where we ask, okay, what is the number of virtual machines in this cluster? Yeah, it's 200. Okay, but 200 of what? Uh, that's a really important question to ask yourself to only focus on the operating system with a server and not over licensing your environment. Calculations. So how do we calculate now the number of licenses and know which model is the most cost effective? Now we use the data that we just discussed uh, as the key element to determine the most cost effective licensing model. But before we dive into the tables and how to license. Uh, first, I want to explain stacking with Microsoft Windows Server Standard. Because uh, with what we ex explained, that Windows Server Standard is giving you two virtual machines when you license the physical hardware, but you can stack those licenses. So if you have a machine running two CPUs, eight cores, each in total 16 cores, if you do two times the licensing model, you can license four virtual machines. If you do it three times, you can license six virtual machines and so on. Now, this is relevant because Windows Server st Standard is way more cost effective than compared to data center. And the break even point is across 10.5, 11 virtual machines. So meaning uh, by, by more than 10 virtual machines, the data center edition becomes more relevant. This was the standard calculation and breakdown uh, in the past. Now with the per virtual machine licensing, oh, the breakdown becomes a little bit different because when you only have four cores attached to a virtual machine with, it, with, two, uh, uh, with 10 virtual machines, still the standard edition and the per virtual machine licensing option is more cost effective than the data center. So these are the calculations you wanna make uh, to determine which model is the most cost effective. So that's the interesting part. So if we compare those three scenarios, right, those three licensing options is that with two virtual machines and a physical machine with two CPUs, eight cores per CPU and a 16 in total, by two virtual machines, we need 16 licenses for standard. With four virtual machines, we need 32 licenses for standard. With six virtual machines, you need 48 core licenses to license it with standard, I think, and so on and so on. With data center, the number doesn't change, right? Because you have an unlimited uh, right of virtual machines. So if you have two virtual machines and a two CPU and 16 core in total, eight core per CPU machine, you need 16, always, you need only 16 core to license. And then you can do the price comparison between the, the two. And the third option is the licensing per virtual machine. And if you then have six virtual machines with four fee cores attached to those virtual machines, meaning six times four, 
and is 24 cores in total to license. And so this is a different calculation, which means you need less licenses uh, compared to uh, the standard option in the stacking area, which means that the comparison is different uh, when we have to make the breakdown in cost. And so the standard breakdown is, let's say, an, uh, on average, a Windows Server data center license to core pack has a cost of 320 euros in an enterprise agreement level A. Now, and the Windows Server standard to core pack only uh, uh, costs 56 euros. Now, times 12 is 280 euros, times 6 is 336, 337 euros, which makes it more uh, cost uh, heavy than compared to the data center. So there's your breaking point. Uh, and you can do the same calculation, of course, with the standard license with a pair VM licensing model. So especially for virtualized environments with, let's say, 8 to 14, 16 VMs, the pair VM option could be very interesting for you to uh, achieve some good cost saving. Then we have licensed the physical hardware, the virtual machines the, with the pair core model. And then we also need the client access license into place. This was in the past really relevant. It's less relevant today and I will explain you later why. Uh, but first of all, you, each user or device who is accessing a Windows Server needs a license. That also counts for an external user. Right? Uh, they need a Windows Server client access license. Now, why is that less relevant today? Because most of your users today are having an M365, F1, F3, E3 or E5 license. And within that suite, you have enterprise mobility and security. And that bundle is giving you hybrid use rights for Windows Server client access license. And so it is less relevant, but for the environment where it is still relevant, let's say in a factory environment where the users don't have a user license, you can determine, okay, do how many users do I have and how many devices do I have? Is a user using multiple devices or is a device being used by multiple users and you determine the most cost-effective model? Then you have your external users, also they need a license uh, and there you have two options, using the client access license when you know the number of externals or you're using Windows Server External Connector, which is licensed per virtual machine or slash per server. Your last relevant topic for compliance uh, is software assurance benefits. And why is that relevant? Because software assurance is giving you some license rights which you can use to license your environment. Uh, within Windows Server, it's, it's quite limited, I would say it's not as relevant as for SQL, for example. Uh, but for uh, Windows Server of, with Software Assurance, first of all, you get the new version rights. That's one uh, of the most important benefits. You are able to do, uh, buy step-up licenses. So when you have bought standard and you need uh, you, a year later you need data center, you can only pay the difference between standard and data center and use a step-up license. You have backup uh, for disaster recovery, uh, called server park. So that is relevant. So if you have an active passive cluster, and you can you know, pull the plug out of the passive uh, site. You don't have to license that passive uh, site and only have to license the active uh, version, which is very relevant and cost effective if you have software assurance and have such an environment. Azure Hybrid benefit, probably the most important one today. And the reason why customers are using software assurance on their Windows Server licenses is bringing those licenses to Azure and have hybrid use benefits with the data center addition. Now, we have another blog, another video about how, how uh, that's being used and how you can utilize that. But literally the meaning is that with a Windows Server data center license, you can license your on-premise environment and your uh, cloud environment at the same time. So how, how does that work? Let's say you have a package of eight cores and you have that licensed on-prem, you can use this same Licensing model also in the cloud. And for standard, you just move it, right? It's or uh, on premise or in the cloud. And, and with data center, once more, it's both, right? The same license on prem and cloud. Uh, you get nano server rights with software assurance. So when you enable nano server, you need software assurance. So this is really a compliance uh, challenge. And the last one is a flexible virtualization benefit.
Thank you for watching to another video from Trudata. I hope you have learned something. If you still have any questions uh, from this video or reading the blog, have, uh, yeah, don't hesitate to reach out to the team. We're more than happy to support you and optimize your Microsoft cost. Thank you for now. See you, bye.